Hi everyone, a warm welcome to everyone for the EA Global Summit 2021. This is Mohamed from the organizing team. Okay, so before we start, as a part of an organizing team, I would like to thank everyone for your interest in joining for the session. So this session is all about the aspect oriented modeling in enterprise architect, where the deeper insights will be shared by uh, Fernando Pintroli, who is the chief execution officer of uh, Spark Systems Argentina. So uh, for your information, we will be muting all the participants throughout the session. And if there is any quest questions uh, during the session or at the end of the thing, you can always use the chat window to uh, drop your questions and we will make sure we are covering it up at the end. Additionally, if you want to collaborate and communicate with Fernando, uh, he there will be like uh, a dedicated Teams channel from the link in the chat box. You can always uh, use that one and uh, post the session an hour of time. Our speaker has agreed to stay in order to clear your queries. Okay, so we feel that that would be very comfortable for you. And if you have any difficulties in accessing the Teams link, please feel free to let us know in the chat box or just drop us an email at registration at eaglobalsummit.com. Okay, so thanks once again for your interest and support. And it's uh, Fernando, the stage is yours. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. I'll share my screen. Yes, you, you can now. Let me check if I'm. Mm. Options, camera. Let me check. Uh, Number well, let me please tell me if you can see my presentation. Yes, I can see aspect oriented modeling. Excellent. Yeah. Well, uh, hi everyone, thank you very much for joining to my session. Uh, today we will talk a little bit about aspect oriented modeling in enterprise architect, but I'll start with some words about me. I'm CEO of uh, Solus, Spark Systems Argentina, sister company of uh, Spark Systems Australia. And we have been working with uh, Enterprise Architect for more than 17 years ago. I'm PhD in computer science, consultant in software engineering and uh, different uh, areas, especially in agile transformation. I'm working with one of the authors of the Agile Manifesto, uh, delivering uh, Agile transformation in the world. Uh, oh, I'm working for a lot of time in more than 20 countries, in three continents, four languages. I'm also a researcher with more than 70 scientific articles published in Americas and Europe in journals and international conferences. I've delivered more than 350 courses and conferences. I'm a member of uh, program committees and different international conferences, co-author of three books, and a reviewer of uh, scientific journals, including uh, NASA's journals. And uh, the most important for me is I'm happily married with my nice wife, with uh, five children and uh, seven grandchildren. I think this is the more important in my life. Well, uh, I'll start with uh, my presentation. Uh, we will talk about uh, aspect-oriented software development in order to understand the approach. We will continue with uh, how to implement uh, this approach in Enterprise Architect. We'll give uh, some conclusions and we'll check uh, some references for those who want to read about uh, this approach. Yeah, regarding regarding aspect oriented uh, software development is I, I, I like to to say that uh, it's a new step in the only path that we we have uh, in the evolution of uh, software development um, we need to manage software complexity and uh, this approach give us the possibility to deal with uh, cross cutting concerns that are tangled and scattered throughout the whole uh, software. This, um, this evolution uh, comes from primitive data types 
passing to data structures, then to classes, and in this moment, to aspects. And primitives uh, data types are char, integer, boolean, as you know, uh, they were wrapped by the concept of a structure, but uh, the, the very structure was um, wrapped again with the concept of abstract data type with classes. And the aspect is wrapping uh, classes into this uh, new concept. Um, well, this uh, approach was uh, created by the Google Kick Sales and uh, the first aspect-oriented uh, programming language is uh, Aspect J, an, an extension of Java. And um, well, the, the problem, as I told you, is how to solve the scattering and tangling that we have in code. Imagine that we have uh, different classes with uh, different methods, and in these classes we have uh, two kinds of uh, methods. Some methods that uh, belong uh, to the problem domain and other methods that are not belonging to the problem domain. In general, they are called uh, non-functional requirements or non-functional methods. Um, in this case, we have these uh, non-functional concerns uh, or methods are tangled with the specific domain concerns. But uh, they are not all, also tangled, but uh, they are also scattered throughout the whole system. This problem of that we, in general, we, we call spaghetti uh, code uh, is solved by this approach because aspect-oriented uh, software development take, takes out these methods and uh, encapsulate them into new elements called aspects. As you can see in the next uh, slide, we have the previous classes without the scattered and tangled methods. These uh, methods were encapsulated into new elements. These new elements are stereotyped as aspect. And uh, the, me the methods were taken out, uh, taken out and put into these uh, new elements uh, called aspects. So in this case, in an aspect-oriented world, we will have classes and aspects. Um, well, of course, we have uh, encapsulated the, the all methods. We need to put them again uh, in the original places because we are facing a unique system well, a weaver is in charge of uh, connecting again the methods that we have taken out. We have the regular, the original class written in a regular object oriented language. Uh, we have aspects. We need a, an aspect oriented language to write uh, this code. And as part of the aspect oriented uh, language, we have a weaver. The weaver must uh, weave the methods in the aspect into, into the original places in order to compose a unique system. In Enterprise Architect, we, we, we will be uh, indicating that uh, some classes are aspects just with the stereotype. Um, in this case, we, I was talking about uh, non-functional methods, but uh, we have also uh, other kind of concerns because, for instance, in, in the prime domain of a hotel, maybe we want to perform a hotel check-in and the methods to perform this operation are scattered throughout all the classes or a lot of classes in the system. Maybe we want other kind of uh, concern like uh, auto checkout, and we have methods uh, throughout uh, the different classes. These uh, concerns must be encapsulated into, into aspects. 
but uh, they are different because they are domain specific aspects so in this case we will have aspects including uh, the, the classes that uh, these aspects need to implement the, the, the objective the, of the aspect but every class will have only the members attributes and uh, methods that every class need to perform the objective of uh, every aspect you can see that maybe we will have the same class scattered throughout different aspects but with different implementations when in, in the moment of uh, composing these classes we have to merge the same class uh, that it is presently in different aspects so in in an aspect oriented world we will have two concepts we will have aspects for instance from my previous examples we have the aspect error handling security and the two aspects belonging to the program domain checking out check out every aspect includes different classes in some cases the same class could be present in different aspects so we have aspects and classes and well we have to model all of this but in some moment we have to compose all of this how to compose uh, this situation well firstly we have to compose the problem domain classes by merging the the classes present in different aspects into a single composed class and then the weaver is in charge of composing the methods of the cross-cutting concerns belonging to the non-functional requirements this is the, the the work that we have to do well regarding uh, the concepts or the elements of the aspect oriented approach firstly we have the regular code that we we have in our regular regular classes written in a regular object oriented language this is a social but we have to use an aspect oriented language to write for instance this code is written in aspect j we need an aspect oriented language to write the the aspect and the aspect needs some elements for instance we have advices every advice is a piece of code that would be inserted in some point in the base uh, code in this case we have two advices you can see a before and an after advice the before advice will be inserted before some point in the base uh, code and the after advice will be inserted after some point this point is indicated by a point cut. The point cut has an, a condition indicating where this advice uh, should be inserted. Mm, as you can see, this uh, point cut is indicated by, by inversion of control that some point in the regular code will be a joint point. The, the base code doesn't know that uh, it has a joint point because this is indicated by the point cut and of course we need the weaver that will be weaving all the advices following what is indicated in the point code in the point cut in those joint points in the whole system that uh, matches uh, with the text indicated in the joint point well these are this, the concepts in this case, I have, after weaving these uh, pieces of, uh, of code, the, the base code and the aspect, are, are woven. In this case, we can see the resulting code after weaving the base code and the, uh, our aspect. Well, these are our elements, the concepts that we have to understand well, to see how to implement aspect oriented modeling into enterprise architect. Well, uh, when we start with an aspect oriented model in, in enterprise architect, we have to understand that we need 
to keep cross-cutting concerns separate throughout the whole system. So we need, we need a, a mechanism in order to keep cross-cutting concerns separate. And then in every level of abstraction, in every level, we have to perform different and less specific aspect oriented activities like we have to detect concern, we have to separate them, we have to encapsulate them, we have to indicate the relationships among elements because we have to compose all the separated element into composed ones, we have to, to include the mechanisms to perform the, the composition and maybe some uh, uh, some functionalities to solve conflict that uh, in some cases we can face after composition. Well, in, us, in Enterprise Architect, we will create all our level of abstraction in uh, descending order as usual. For instance, in this case, I have a business model, user requirement model, software model, maybe different views inside of uh, some models. Well, it, this is a social. We create all the level of uh, abstraction that we need. Uh, after this, uh, I'll enter the business model. And in the business model, we have to create both kind of processes. Those processes that are concerned, but they are regular processes, and other processes that they are cross-cutting. And uh, cross-cutting processes must be included into packages stereotyped with aspect. And in, in general, we indicate aspects or concerns throughout the life cycle with packages. So every package in this moment is a concern. Uh, a regular process is a concern and it is included in a regular package but those uh, cross-cutting processes are included including in a cross-cutting package uh, indicated with aspect in this case um, we are uh, managing two approaches that we can find into the aspect oriented approach um, we have two, two lines, the symmetric approach and the asymmetric approach in, in the literature. Um, in this case, we will have uh, our, our processes as usual. So we have to manage them separately, uh, those belonging to the domain and those that uh, there are cross-cutting concerns. In this case, in, in our process, we have a regular process. We have a point cut. The point cut is indicated by means of an annotation element from BPMM. The element must have a text following a specific grammar because this grammar must be parsed in order to perform the composition. Uh, the, um, the aspect is indicated in order diagram. Uh, in, the aspect is indicated uh, by means of a, of a pool. And inside of an aspect, we have the advices. The advices are allocated into lanes. In this case, we have two advices. The annotation element is the point cut. And the point cut is indicating the join point. Uh, in the advice, we have other element called join point because it's representing all the join points in all the base processes that we have indicating that they are uh, join points. In this case, we have a before advice because we have this activity register checkout before the join point. So this activity after composition will be uh, composed before the join point in the base uh, in the base diagram. At the end of my presentation, I'll show you an enterprise architect a plugin 
performing this composition with an example. Um, well, all these conventions, uh, the text, the grammar, the conventions, uh, the elements that we are using uh, should be selected from some approach. In this case, I'm using uh, the approach that I presented in my PhD thesis, but uh, there are different uh, approaches in, in the literature that you can follow. Of course, I'm following mine. Um, well, we have uh, all the packages, all the packages are containing uh, the processes. We have uh, base processes or base aspects, and uh, we have a concern model. Uh, it is uh, really easy for enterprise architect to parse the point cuts and to create this uh, relationship between packages and indicating the cross cuts uh, relationship uh, among them. Uh, this is a traceability intralevel, but uh, we have other kind of traceability intermodel. Uh, when we move uh, from one model to the other one, to the next one, we have to copy all the package structure in the new model, because in this way, by using the same name, the same packages, we will keep separate all the concerns throughout the life cycle. Of course, it is possible to find, uh, to detect new concerns in the following uh, model, but uh, we don't have to create it uh, in the previous model because all the concerns will be growing uh, model by model. Um, in this case, we will have, in if we if we see both uh, levels of abstraction, we'll have activities in the previous model, in the business model, re requirements in the user requirement model, and the enterprise architect can trace requirements belonging to the same packages because following the name of, uh, of the packages can detect that some requirements must be traced with the activities of the previous model. But in, in case of aspects, we have to manually um, connect the, the requirements with the previous, uh, with the elements of the previous model. Um, we have two kinds of, uh, of relationship here, trace and cross cuts. Um, in intra-level, in user requirements, we have different requirements, some of them are cross-cutting requirements, and they will be connected via our cross-cut uh, connector uh, with uh, that uh, requirement that they are cross-cutting. But regarding other kind of requirements, because this is model with uh, functional requirements, with other kind of requirements, non-functional requirements, we have to follow the positive and negative contribution relationship that uh, it, it exists among uh, non-functional requirements that we can find in, in the literature. And uh, we, it is possible uh, to indicate that some requirement belongs to some category and uh, immediately will be connected uh, with other um, due to this uh, relationship that they they have. Um, when we want to move uh, from the user requirement model to the software requirement model, again, we copy the same uh, structure of packages. In this case, we will include a use case in every package to represent the concern we are using the element in use case, but uh, the specification can be done by use cases, methods, or you can specify specify them as user stories or whatever. But uh, we use the element use case. In case of uh, some concern is uh, coarse-grained, we can uh, slice it 
and maybe we will have more uh, use cases in this model, but we must create a new package for every use case because every package is a concern. Um, maybe we can create a package for roles in this in this moment, or maybe we have uh, previously created in the previous models. Um, well, after after this. Uh, I like uh, the, the use of uh, use cases, the element use case, because they have a very good level of granularity because use cases are value oriented. Value -oriented. Um, I like the concept of role in actors and the, the concept of uh, the extend relationship because, as you, can, as you could see, the um, in aspect-oriented uh, software development, we have inversion of control, like uh, extend is indicating. Um, perfect. Uh, in this case, when we move from functional view to the static uh, view, again, we copy the same structure of packages, but in this case, for every um, use case, we have to create a collaboration. The collaboration will realize every, every use case. And the realization in this, uh, in this view will be a class uh, data, realize, realizing the use case. Then we will have different class diagrams for different use cases and maybe, or it is really possible to have the same class repeated in different realizations. In this, in this case, for instance, we have the realization of uh, the concert number one, the realization of concert number two, and if we check, we can see sample protocol repeated in different concerns. Well, with our plugin, we must merge the repeated classes in order to uh, obtain the compost model. In this case, we will have this, the classes that are repeated in different concerns uh, included in the compost model as a single class, but including, including all the members, attributes, and methods from the original classes. And we can we must merge all the classes into a composed model. We have to compost attributes and methods. I'll show you how to do it. Um, we have three approaches to compose, merge, override, and ad hoc. In case of merge, imagine that we have to classes in different concerns, and we want to compose these classes into a single one. In this case, since we are merging, we, we have the same method in both classes, and we move both methods, but we have to rename them, but we will create the, the method, the common method, too. Uh, in this case, with a sequence diagram, I'm showing how to connect the original methods. So when we call receive sample, in this case, we will be performing both methods. Um, one method of the original class, the classes will be uh, performed first, but if we want to indicate some order we could use the, the a relationship stereotyped uh, with uh, precedes in order to indicate that we want to have uh, first the method coming from one concern and then the other. Um, regarding attributes, we can see that in the previous classes we have uh, two attributes in one class, two in the other class, but when they are composed, we will have three attributes because code, it is present in both original classes. In case of uh, we have uh, different types 
or different uh, properties for an attribute, uh, the final property will be the, the, the more, uh, the wider one, the, the wider one. Huh? That, that uh, property that uh, is covering both, uh, both cases. In case that uh, we use override instead of uh, merging, uh, we have to indicate that one concern overrides the other one. And in this case, in the moment of the composition, uh, we will have in the compost class, in case of we have uh, the same method in both original classes, we will have only one. The, the method present in, present in the overriding uh, concern. It's easier, but we are losing uh, some methods and ad hoc is a, a mixture of uh, both uh, previous uh, approaches because Enterprise Architect will be telling us that we have uh, the same method in both classes and we can choose if merging them or overriding them or maybe um, avoiding the, the, the class or for instance. Well, um once we have uh, um, we have merged we have merged the classes of uh, belonging to the problem domain we have to connect the cross cutting concerns and in this case for instance in this in this example we have we need for the cross cutting concerns parameter parameterized packages in order to indicate the method that will enter the package and then we have how to manage the, the, the methods. We'll have the entering method and the advice that will be added before or after, depending on the, the point cut, the entering method. Um, well, Regarding the state uh, view, we have um, state uh, diagrams. Uh, in this case, uh, we don't create a new an, a new view because we we put every state diagram uh, depending on the the class. And the, in this case, if we have two the same class in different concerns we will have two different state diagrams. Uh, in this uh, example, for instance, we have one state diagram coming from one concern and the other state diagram that when the classes are composed, we must compose not only members, attributes and methods, but also the state diagrams in this case, we will have a composed diagram including all the states from both original state diagrams. Um, well, just uh, as uh, conclusions, um, in this case, we can we can model in Enterprise Architect all the elements throughout the software development life cycle. Um, of course, that in order to do this, we need rules, we need grammars, we need conventions, and we have to define all of this in, in order to create a plugin or anything, because of course we need added functionality in Enterprise Architect to perform all of this. Um, regarding the, the the code uh, generation, we have two alternatives. First, we could uh, compose all the classes uh, in before generating code, and then we can use the regular uh, transformation templates in Enterprise Architect to create, uh, to, to generate code in the selected language, or maybe we could generate the aspect-oriented code before 
composition, but we should create specific uh, transformation template for aspect oriented uh, uh, code. Um, in summary, uh, we have uh, our different uh, levels of uh, abstraction. Uh, we have uh, our concerns model as packages, and they are um, uh, they are being uh, detected and created uh, progressively throughout the whole software development uh, cycle. Um, we have uh, all the concerns uh, separate throughout all the models, all the levels of abstractions. We have a bidirectional traceability of concerns because they they have the same name or they are included into the previous packages if we create a new new concerns in in the following models we have bidirectional traceability of the elements included in the concerns or packages um, we can use standard notations techniques uh, tools that we are used to use in the real world settings um, in particular we can use enterprise architect of course uh, we have a, a generic uh, framework process, so it is independent of uh, cycle models or approaches. We can uh, model this with a traditional approach, an agile approach, or whatever. And uh, above all, we have the, the help of enterprise architect to manage all of this. Well. Um, I'll present a small composition in Enterprise Architect. Uh, in this case, uh, well, we have uh, our models, as I told you, and uh, in this case, um, we have an example. In this case, we have a, a, a process, a base process. Um, it's a regular process, but imagine that we need to check or to the, the um, the access of uh, customers when they have to proceed to pay their, what they are buying. In this case, we have to indicate our join point with uh, an annotation element, stereotyped as aspect, and with a small grammar. The first part, access control, is uh, part as the name of our aspect. Then we have the name of the advice. We have other elements in our grammar, but I I want to show just a few elements in order to show a, an easy an easy concept. In this case, we have uh, other processes. We have the base process. We have other processes in this in this case cross cutting aspects. We have a stereotyped. Uh, with aspect, our process. In this case, we have uh, the process to, to control the, the access of uh, customers. In this case, we have a pool called access control that uh, represents the name of the aspect. We have only one advice inside called login. That's why we have put access control and login in the point cut. Well, in this case, we have to select a destination package, and uh, in this, uh, I'll start with my my base uh, process. Imagine that we have to put all of this before this joint point. So we have to prepare enough room to place all the activities in the advice. Well, we have this, we select the destination package, and that's all. We create, we have created here the final diagram. Maybe we have to uh, to arrange a little bit uh, some connectors, but we have moved all the, all the activities and we have included our advice here. And in that way, we can reuse our advices in all the base processes indicated with a point cut. And uh, this is uh, the way to, to compose. Uh, well, this is a small example. 
and uh, uh, I hope uh, I was clear. As you can as you can see, uh, English is not my native language, but uh, I, I have uh, tried to do my best. I hope you have understand you have uh, understood all. And uh, well, I'll give you some references if you want to read a little bit about that. In general, I've presented um, when you can see Pinsiroli because uh, I have a lot of uh, scientific articles explaining how to do this. Unfortunately, my PhD thesis is in Spanish. I hope I'll translate it uh, in some month, but uh, it's, uh, it is published in ResearchGate. Um, but if you want to understand some concepts, Clark and Benny Saad and Jacobson, they both have um, really good uh, books about uh, these concepts. But, well, the approach that I've used and I've implemented in Enterprise Architect is um, described in my, in my articles. And that's why I, I mentioned them here. And uh, well, thank you very much for your attention, for being part of my session. And well, I'm open to your questions. Uh, I'm reading some questions here in uh, Teams, and I'll try to to answer these questions. Uh, well, aspect-oriented programming is much older. Uh, it's, uh, Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, with the name of uh, aspect oriented, uh, with the name of uh, aspect oriented, yes, was created at the end of the past uh, century. But uh, uh, it is true, the, the concepts are previous. And I, I don't remember the, the name. I think uh, in, in that case, it was called open implementation, I think, um, in, in that moment. But uh, yes, of course, um, as usual. Uh, in general, all the concepts are really old, but uh, little by little, uh, they are put all together and they have a name. And, uh, the aspect, well, no, no, no. Um, the, the, well, about uh, Kedarapt. No, the aspect uh, and cross code are not available in Enterprise Architect because uh, if, if we have developed a plugin to implement uh, all of this. Um, and I was uh, showing how to uh, use the regular elements in Enterprise Architect, but we need uh, the aid of a plugin in order to perform the compositions. And uh, well, Matt Thomas, um, mm, aspect oriented modeling seem to be applying so techniques at class level rather than component level. Uh, well, in general, uh, aspect orientation is a concept that you can apply to the whole software development life cycle. Of course, you have different techniques in depending on the level of traction where you are applying this the, the aspect oriented modeling. Um, it is possible to think on in an aspect oriented way in all the levels of abstraction. It's like to say, for instance, object orientation. Uh, can we use the concept of class uh, in the business process or in code or in architecture or wherever? Yes, of course, because it is just about uh, keeping all the cross-cutting concerns separate and uh, having a method, a mechanism to compose all these separate, separate elements. Uh, depending on the level of abstraction, we will have different mechanisms to compose. Um, well, how 
do we get the extension? Well, um, we can uh, we can uh, offer our extension for free. Uh, we will publish it in. Uh, I think I can publish uh, my presentation, and uh, we'll put our extension for you. No problem. The problem is in this moment is uh, it, it is written in Spanish, but uh, well, it, I think it it will be easy to, to translate, and we will give you in English if you want. I don't know, Sujat, if you have uh, more questions. If not, well, thank you very much for your attention and for joining to my session. Perfect. So thank you so much uh, for an uh, uh, imperative uh, session and informative one. Okay, so uh, Fernando, so, and I would like to thank everyone. Okay, so just, Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, here we go. So thank you so much, everyone, for your time and patience. And also, like I feel, I hope uh, this session could have been uh, more informative and uh, like it it would be making the complete uh, understand the complete details about the session. Okay, so uh, we are kind currently on uh, winding up and with regards to get in touch with Fernando, you can always use the uh, chat window. Okay, so you can uh, okay. find the Teams link. Okay, so you can they can just uh, get in touch with Fernando if you would like to collaborate with him. So that is all guys and uh, we'll be uh, seeing you very soon in the next upcoming sessions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, I hope uh, it, it, it was uh, clear. And, uh, to all the attendees, uh, a kind information where uh, we will be having all the recordings of the uh, current session. Okay, so it will be uploaded to the EA Global Summit website in like upcoming two weeks. Okay, so you can always register and you can access to the sessions and uh, you can check it out whenever you need it. And thank you so much again. And as a part of an organizing team, I would like to thank each and everyone, every individual to, uh, for showing interest in this summit. Thank you so much again.